I have run, uh, I'm Linke Luthard and I'm uh, going to show you how I groom the Continental on the Standard Poodle and um, most of the I'm going to try to tell you why I do that. Before I'm going to uh, start grooming her, I want to tell you something about bathing her and weekly maintenance. As you can see, I already have bought her yesterday. I never bought my, my dog at the same day at the competition. Because when the dog has to stand on the table for the competition, before you start it's already on the, on the table for like an hour, then the competition. And then the after judgment, it's a long time for the dog, they can handle it. But if you also have to bath him before and you have to bath him and blow them dry pro properly, so you stretch, have to stretch all the hair, it's way, in my opinion, way too long for the dog. So then you have to uh, wash and dry them for three hours and then after that you have the competition. So I, I always do that before. Another reason why I do that before, the day before is uh, because if you um, directly scissor your dog after you have washed him, the hair of course is straight, very straight if you have blown them dry correctly. Uh, if you do it the day after, the coat is already a little bit bouncing back. Um, if you do brush them uh, before you start, and you do the line brushing then, uh, you have more bounce in the hair. If I bought her for a show or a competition, I only wash her one time with shampoo. You can wash them one time and you can perfectly scissor them after it, but you have to make sure that the coat is clean. If I have uh, washed her one time, that will be enough. Uh, for a coat be because I will make sure that in one time the coat is clean. Um, I go before I do the blow drying, I will spray her in always. And if I go to the uh, grooming competition or the dog show, I will spray her in with a volume spray or a, a more texturizer spray. Um, if I do it for the maintenance, of course, it's a conditioning spray. Now is the most important part uh, of everything is blown dry. Um, if I do blow dry my dog for maintenance, I will use the blaster. And if I uh, know she has no mats at all, sometimes only the blaster is uh, good enough. Um, if I go to a dog show or to most important for the grooming competition is to straighten the hair. So I will blow her dry with the blaster because it's way faster. But after that I always use the normal uh, blower with the brush and brush it layer by layer by layer. And that is the most part of to straighten the hair. And then you can think, yeah, but you do it the day before so it's curl, curl, curl again. That is absolutely right. But if I now do brush her, do the lay brushing without um, the, the blower, it will stretch again. And sometimes when I go uh, on a grooming competition, I have a, a blower with me, just a small blower. And before I go into the, the ring, I will put the blower in my neck and do the line brushing with the blower. And then you have it perfectly well. If I uh, bought her for the maintenance belt, I always do first time the shampoo and then conditioning, but uh, my way, and I know a lot of people will do it with poodles, is put oil in the bath, I never do. The reason I don't do that is because I go a lot to the beach with my uh, uh, dogs and I have a horse riding area in the garden and they roll in the sand and they play and they do. If, they, if I put the oil in uh, the coat of the dog and I don't rinse it out, the coat is going uh, too much, stick to each other and it's not open enough. So I do use some, uh, something like that. I, I uh, 
so I, I will put the, um, the Nagyu tablets with the oil in it. That's the only thing with oil that works for my dog. If I do other oils between of to my uh, conditioning or something like that, it, it's I don't like it. I don't I don't found the, the good one yet. Uh, let's keep it that way. The conditioning spray I used a lot, a lot before blowing dry. Then before the normal uh, stand dryer, before uh, brushing, if, if I have to brush her again, before putting beds and wraps in, I, I rinse them <laughs> almost with the conditioning spray to keep them moist, moist in. Now we have to do the light brushing, so I will start. Uh, another thing, what I do with the line brushing, if she want to lay down one side, it's okay for me, but then she has to stand up, because if I do one side, I lay her down, and I will do the line brushing, and I will turn her over to do the other part, I can start all over again to do this part, because she make it flat again. So most of the time, she just has to stand up for me to do the line brushing and then I just use a normal slicker, use the spray, I never brush it without the spray. So I will only spray uh, the parts where I'm gonna brush, I'll just leave this until the end, I won't touch it, I won't spray it with the conditioner spray because then I will make it soft and I don't want to make this too soft because I have to stand it up later. I just spray not too much. Okay, first I uh, will start with the line brushing and I just go hold every, every hair up and just put some hairs out from that. And you already see that I only have to brush it light and you already straighten up the coat. What I do, always checking and make it straight and then let it come and now I go up to the top just making lines until I've done everything if you think that your uh, hair or the, the coat I must say the coat is um, a little bit static, just use some spray to control the coat. And I do it part by part because I don't make the whole body in one time. I just do this part and then I go to the other part until I have done the whole dog like this. For every competition, including also for the dog shows, I before I'm gonna spray up at a dog show, every time I wanna, I, I do the line brushing. And I'm about in a minute to tell you why, but I have to go to the top before. So now, I'm already starting now, uh, with the basic of my, my scissoring because I now I just put the hair in the direction I want to lay where the, where the hair is so when I start scissoring the dog I don't have to come that much because that costs time and you can use all you have to um, use all the time you have on the grooming competition I don't want to lose time with combing my dog because the hair is everywhere and not where I want it to be. So, for example, now I do this with the brush. I control it with the comb. And if I just get my comb and now I will nicely put the hair on top of each other. I just consider here in one time just because I have straightened up the hair and I just put the hair in the place where I want to be it and not 
where it's from itself. If I sit her it like that and just only do this to fluff her up, I definitely know that if I'm scissor it, I have to calm it out a thousand times uh, before I get the right lines in. And I know if I do it like this, I just have to do it calm it one time or two times, uh, and then I already have my line in. So, this I'm gonna do on the whole body, even on the socks, on the pumps, and the pumps on the hip, every part. I want to be ready for scissoring. Most of the time I will do this uh, outside the ring. So when I come to a grooming competition and I know that it starts, for example, at um, 2 o'clock, I will start at 1 o'clock to line brush my dog, just to make the coat ready. So I always start at the bottom and then I go to the top. I even do that with blowing dry. If I uh, use the power blaster, I also start at the top and then I climb up above. It's uh, way quicker for me to blow dry this much coat because then you have uh, smaller layers, they blow dry uh, each time. If I pull my blower on top and you have to blow through all that hair, you can imagine it costs a much longer time than, do, than just do piece by piece. Because of my history in the horses, when I groom a poodle, definitely don't say that they are the same, that a poodle is the same as a horse, but you can make a, compare them with a dressage horse. If you see a dressage horse, it has a lot of power, but it's really beautiful and elegant to watch. If you see a jumping horse or a, a quarter horse for the western, they have also the power, but they have not the elegance like a, a dressage horse. Um, if I groom them and will explain you uh, parts, probably I will mention uh, something about the horse and to uh, explain you, because then I can definitely, uh, I think, explain you better uh, to tell you why I do some parts that way. Uh, after the line burst, we start, of course, with the shaving part. You already have to know where you have to shave. Um, because I want to give her that ele elegance and strengthness, I want to uh, look like that she is going a little bit more upwards, so that when she should move, she will push with her back legs to the front, so she, and then she can reach out in the front. Um, to give her more the look that she is going a little bit more upward, I have to make sure that my behind palm is not higher than my front palms. I go from the back point of the back palm, from that point I measure to the front and then the line should go or straight or as you can see slightly up and never going down because if you make this line down or eagle of uh, the same as your back palms your dog is already look like he's uh, walking on his front 
legs or his shoulders and not from the back to the front. Um, to start shaving the back palm, I always use my fingers to measure where I have to start shaving. This point is her hock. I always, always lay down two fingers just above the hock, not on top of the hock, just above. If you feel with your finger here, you can feel that uh, right, right before the hock comes, there is a little hole in the, in the back leg. And from that point, I will lay down my two fingers and go straight up. Because we don't have any hair left at this point to uh, create some uh, angulation or something like that, we have to make the angulation in the back palm. And how you can do that is to make the front line lower than the back line. So it's like something like this part. You can also feel, if you feel with your finger, you're going down and where uh, the angulation is start, there's the point where you have to start shaving the front from the back palm. The line in the back palm should not be the straight line from the front, but it should be a little bit more down in the front. So you create here the angulation. I almost forgot to tell. I always shave uh, this uh, with the shortest um, blade there is. It's just a, a zero. 0.5 or and then I go against um, the coat but there is one point I do uh, it a little bit longer and that is right here at the back because if I do it here as short as over here it's a, just a little bit more ugly it's a little bit more pink uh, than the black skin like here so I do this at the 0 0.5 or the 1 millimeter, and this I do a little bit longer, and here I go as short. The same line I make here, I exactly completed at the inside. So also down. Where I start to shave for uh, the palms on her hips, I don't want the palms too much backwards. So I always start to feel where her tail is start. If you hold the tail up, there start the tail, so I want to make sure that the tail is free if I look at her. So if I cross this line from the point where the tail start, I don't want the pumps to hit this line. So I definitely want to have this free. So I know for sure that I definitely do not want to come behind this line. Then I start here, I feel where her muscle here is going from, if you feel uh, the muscle is hard and then you're going to the tuck up. And when it starts from the heart changing to the soft point, there's my point where I put my shaving line in. If I have done that, then I will do uh, the the line between the palm and the jacket and between here, but I will start with this. If I shave, I never shave the palms round, I shave it square. They look round when I finish scissoring, but the shaving part is always square. If I shave the palms now round, then um, you could create the palms later on that they uh, open up too widely 
and then they are going to sit on the side of the dog and not on top of the dog. This straight line I shave until the last rib of her body where the jacket starts. So in one line I will shave it to the front to the last rib. Just a straight line. I'm already started shaving the, 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 the point of the tail. I really don't like it when this is too sh shaved up too much. Just hold that two fingers because when she is moving or I have scissor uh, her completely, I, I want that the tail is uh, a part of her whole body and not that this a dog and somewhere a tail behind there. And also because if you leave a little bit more hair on the tail, if you stack your dog, all this hair will close the kind of negative space here between the top line later and the body. So your dog looks like not too long. Sometimes you hear someone saying you have to make the dog short as possible. I don't think that is a correct word because you can't scissor or, or shave bone of your dog. I think you can better say you don't have to make him longer than your dog is. So use and work with the body of your dog. So this is a straight line. I just leave this line here. I shave this line when I have done the other part. Um, I don't round it off in here yet, just make it straight line to the other side. Now I will shave this part behind her jacket until on top of the back. I also just scissor a straight line, just tiny bits, just tiny bits with your blade because uh, sometimes you shave a lot more than you than you want. So I always put my blade in like this and just tip it and that's more than enough because you don't want to have more space here because I work with her body and I don't want to make uh, her look uh, longer than she is. So just one finger, max two fingers between, it's more than enough. If you open this too much, of course your, your dog is look like very long in his back. Now I shave her back leg. Now I'm gonna shave her front leg. I want that line to go a little bit more upward so when she stands she look a little bit more upward and not hanging down with her front. So I will get from the top of her back legs on the back bones. Go to the front and that's where I start. Sometimes you think, oh wow, that's really high, but don't forget, we are going to lift his up from her feet. So when you look at her, she is standing on her feet and not that her feet is somewhere in the hair of her palms. And then you think, well, maybe this is a really short part and it makes her uh, leg look like sh shorter, but we're going to shave all on top of there. All two fingers above the elbow, I will shave all the hair. From so I hold the hair, the jacket, jacket up in my hands. I push everything above, and only the hairs that fall out here, I will shave. So I also shave it on the inside because if she moves, I don't want to see here 
I'm sorry, this is shaving hair. That there is some hairs here on her elbow. I found it a really ugly way if uh, to see when she would move that there is hair between coming out. I want it nice and clean. <laughs> so now we are going to copy paste it on the other side. The line uh, between the palms uh, on the hips must be straight from the tail to the jacket. And just make uh, a straight line, not too wide. This one, I one finger at least. So I just use the tip of the blade. And if you find it a little bit scary to do, you can also use uh, first your scissor. Just put your scissor in and just make one line. I will do it with the blade. And just separate the hair. And then I will start in the middle. So then you have a nice small line and when you scissor it, you will open it more because you scissor this part of the hair but your line must be as small as possible so now I have shaved squares <laughs> now we have to uh, do two things to make them a little bit look like rounder already before scissory and that is just make a small V and a small V at the end and a small V up here so you widen up open up a little bit of the dog Now I'm going uh, to do the scissor part. What I always do when I go for a grooming competition, uh, you must be as fast as possible because then you have to have more time to do the finishing. Um, my fault in the beginning was to start, at, for example, back home, scissoring it, scissoring it, scissoring it, and then go to the front and scissoring it, scissoring it. And it takes me a lot of time to go through whole the dog. Um, these days I do it different. I just put lines in as quick as possible and then she's very ugly. And then I always have to have laugh about myself but I, I'm always thinking I hope nobody's watching because the first hour my dog is not really don't look very nice because I just put the lines in as quick as possible and I don't pay attention to anything for finishing or, or make it proper or clean or something. I will just do it after I have done all the lines. Um, for now I start with the jacket. Just put the lines in. And we want the jacket to look like round, but also with the jacket, I start to scissoring it square. First line I make is the line uh, behind her elbow. I don't want to have any hair below the elbow, not in front of the leg, not behind the leg, nowhere. 
and it must be a straight line, just a straight line. And for this part, I comb every hair down. I feel where the elbow is. I just lay down my scissor at the, the bone on the side way of her leg here next to her elbow because then I am right with my scissor at the point of her elbow just like there this I use her body to make the line correct so I just scissor it like that just cut it off I don't make it nice and clean I just want to cut it and get rid of the hair as fast as possible. So my next line, also a straight line, is the line behind her last rib. Here I do the same, I comb everything backwards. I'm all, always holding the head of my dogs, because if I don't hold her like this, this and she won't stand like that herself, if she put her head down, my line and her body is over, um, already changing. And if you know, when you prejudge, you have to hold your dog in position. So that's the position I'm scissoring my dog. So, just from the bottom, I go on top, just cut it off, all the way up. So my next line is in front of her. Also this line is straight. I never ever put a uh, build up with the coat uh, a chest on her. I will use the chest of my uh, dog. This one is must be straight in my opinion. If she hold her head just like she have here just straight up, you make this straight and then you round the chest, you have more than enough chest. If you build up a chest with a coat you, and you want to create that it's like a, a kind of a swan so that he's just put her head all the way up there, your dog can move. In my opinion, your dog can, can move. What he will do? He will put up his uh, legs above and she never ever can reach out. So I definitely, definitely don't want to create that look on my poodle. I just want her nicely straight with her neck straight up. And I don't want to make her longer as possible. So when I build up a chest and make her longer in body than that she uh, actually is. So I'm gonna just follow her body. So this part I make short from the part when I, where I shave her neck. Just shorten it up in a straight line to her chest bone. The only part I go backwards is in her neck because I like it when uh, we don't have the wraps in the ear and the ear is um, loose, that the ear has space to lay down, lay down in here. If I let this full, the ear don't have any space, you won't see any uh, angulation in the front and even when she is in the continental I do want to see the angulation in her shoulder. So from this part I hold her ear up, don't push it too much because you change the skin, just hold it up like that and I'm from the straight point here I go a little bit backwards to her ear 
this line, I will make a line in my head, just a straight line, and to the point where her back is start, and all that be in front of my comb, in front of my line, I will sit her a little bit more backwards. And not because I want to create her neck is going behind, because I definitely don't want that. I just want to make here more angulation of her shoulder. The other line is this one was straight. Sorry, a little, couple of little hairs. I follow that line from her front leg to the other front leg. And that also is a straight line. So I'll come this a little bit out. First I'm gonna make that straight line. And now from the point of her chest bone, I will round this off to that straight line. So I go straight, straight, and then round this off to that straight, li straight line. Now we have had a hard line here, so now I will put my scissor from under to above. Uh, a little just like this on that hard line. Then we have to uh, create this straight line to connect with that straight line. So from halfway her jacket. If you don't see, you can also make lines in the jacket. From halfway the jacket, we're gonna round this part off to that straight point. If I sit her this size, uh, this side, it's easier for me to go that way than to go that way. So from this straight line, I'm going to round this off until halfway her jacket. So now we're going to do the side and I go from, I will draw that line again, from my chest bone, I will round this off to that point and the side of your jacket is always straight, it's never round, we create it round, we just make it look like round, but we round it off from the bottom to halfway of the jacket. This part we round it off to that point, this part we round it off to that point, this part we round it off to that point. This point is always straight up because when I have sp uh, spray up her top line, I want to make sure that the hair from her body is going to straight up in her top line and not look like a bump is swinging around it. I don't sit her yet above her line of her back. I will scissor this later when uh, we have to done the spray. If I look at her now, I find myself that her line is going too much down. And as you can remember from when I was telling about the socks, I want to make it uh, at least go a little bit more up, or at least as straight as possible. So I have to shorten it up a little bit more here and make it a little bit, round it a little bit more up over here. To gi give um, the jacket a round effect, um, we continue this line which we have started earlier. To round it off from the bottom to halfway the jacket. This is the part where you create your jacket look like round. It's totally not over here. It's from this part. So for now I will leave it. I will just turn her and then I will 
that do the lines in the other side. Um, and when we have done everything, I will do the finishing and make it clean so that nothing comes out anymore. What I found really important is that if you see the dog walk, then it, I found it really ugly when the palm is to the hang, hanging to the side. If you um, thinking of a quarter horse with uh, the saddle bags at the sides, it's very ugly. When she will move her legs and this will be to the side, it will be like the saddle bags. I absolutely hate that. So I want to be that the highest point is on top of the pump. So first, I'm going to do is I'm calm everything down again. Just make a straight line. First, everything I make square and straight. Under. Then I calm everything backwards. I lay down my scissor on her muscle here and I make a straight line at the back. Then I come everything forward. And now I am a little bit more careful with my straight line. I do make a straight line. But I only tip it. I don't um, take it from the point where I've shaved her because if I I scissor from that point, I lose all this hair. But I come forward. It's not coming from there. It's sitting here actually. So I do come it all the way over there, so that if I scissor it and I comb the coat again, that I already create my line look like a little bit more round here. So it's just for helping myself to go a quicker and easier rounding. So but now I go calm it forward, but then I go in halfway the jacket where I shaved and halfway where I shaved from the pump. So I only tip it, only cut the tips off. And that's more than enough. And the way I do it here, I also do it in between. So I calm everything to the side. And I will hold my hand on the coat from the other palm. But don't do it like that because the skin will switch. And your line definitely not come the right. I just hold my scissors straight in the middle of her tail and her back line and I just tip everything which is going over that line. We're going to make look the palms round but they definitely uh, aren't because um, we make it flat at the side and then round it off to the top. So if you look at the dog, it will look round, but it definitely is flat here because I want to create it is still on top of his hips and not hanging to the side. So not that the, the most coat is on the side, but it is way too ugly in my point of view. So I calm it. I go, if you're scared for the skin, just hold it and just go from that part underneath and then we make it flat at the side and then if we are halfway halfway the palm or you can also say on the line it's maybe a little bit above the halfway because it's the line where the the back is start there is the point we round it off So I have shaved it 
square and now we have to make it a little bit more round and I will do that but I will do that only scissoring so now I scissoring just the tips and if you are uh, look closely you can still see that my middle lines will be straight even when I make this round or make this round there are always straight points in it if I don't do that I create uh, so much space between the palm and the jacket the only place where we have to make that V is where I already show you with the blade I will leave this as the highest point as the palm so I hold my scissor in between the palms I'll hold it straight and then I will go scissoring up I turn the scissor and then I will round it off I will leave it like this for a moment I will turn her first and do the other side so I will just leave it and now we're going to do the first of the pumps then we do the spray up and then I'm going to fishing, finishing her okay now we're going to scissor uh, first her back pump um, first thing I'm going to do is I calm everything down I will grab the hair with my hands like that I will hold up sorry again, the paw and I will pull a little bit on her leg to push this hair down as much as I can just like that and hold the foot in my uh, hand I do it like this and then I will go into shave uh, shave this off instead of scissoring it with my scissor because this way I'm a lot quicker and I can uh, just finishing that line in two times I'm gonna show you what the second time is um, and I know that I don't have to look to that line again after this so first shave it all the way around the foot put the foot back but I will pull it up again but now I don't push the hair, all the hair down I will hold it up I just shake it a little and then I only make the underline clean and I don't touch this hair again if the dog is standing I always shave the whole foot of the poodle all the way around I don't stop shaving here with her toes because then in my opinion the hair is falling over the foot and if I look to the dog uh, from a distance, I want to look like that she is on kind of paws and have the powerness of standing on their feet and if they have good feet, just show them their feet, don't hide them under um, the coat I calm everything up, start to scissor the front of the pump remember this line was not straight but it was going a little bit down uh, at the front so we want to keep, keep that line like that when we're scissoring it so now we're gonna start with the uh, uh, back palms um, there is one difference between um, the palms on a grooming competition sometimes and the palms on a show I mostly uh, will uh, scissor them how we do it on the show, at least how I do it on the show and not scissor me, uh, scissoring the palms round on top uh, on the top of the palm because if you make this part round 
and you round it off too much like that, if the dog is going to walk and the hair is going a little bit more downwards, then it will look like um, a pair. So they are small at the top and then they are going wider at the bottom. bottom. And I don't like that. So if I groom the palms on the grooming competition, I do groom them how I want to groom them, see them on the show. And I know how they look when she is moving around. Uh, to do that, I will just explain in a minute. Uh, for now, I just start at the front. I never want the hair at the front falling over the foot. So I know this will be my last line. So I just can put here a line in, make a mark. So that's the point where I want to go to. And to create more angulation here, we have to make it here a little bit more flat. So then this line look more and the shorter we'll make it here, the more hair it will look like over there. Then I will go and stand next to her, behind her actually. And then I will uh, sit her, first I will sit at the side. But if I start this line, I will hold my sit in the position, position that I want to see that angulation. And then I hold the scissor flat, I walk to the side, just turn my scissor and then I will go scissoring it straight to the point that I make it here. First, I'm, I make it look like square, so I do the front and I do the side and I do the inside. At, at the last, I do the, the back side because we have to have here the most hair because we he, want the angulation over here. And then I will make all the parts round to each other. But first I make straight lines. Now you can see I'm already making a turn from this straight part to that straight part with my scissor. To create that she is standing on her toes like that and not to create uh, when you look at her that she's standing look like she's flat or, or um, she's going with the foot standing here at the back I always scissoring here up cut it a little bit more off so if you look at her back palm, it should be a little bit of a line like that. Almost a little V in it. So now this hair, I want to scissor it, but I want to be careful with it. Because I don't want to, I only want to tip it and make it clean. So most of the time I will uh, do use my chunker for it. And just tip it with a chunker. Now I only have to tip this part because I don't have to sit it any shorter. Okay, now we have to do the front. I will start exactly the same like the back. I will calm everything down. Then I will push every hair in my hand down. I will pull the foot between my hand and I will use the blade. Now I'm comb everything upwards just to make a start. Actually, I will do a little bit the same with I do at the bottom. <coughs> but now, of course, I will use my scissor because now the hair is standing straight up. And I will, will tip the hair 
this way. Just tip it. Don't make it as short as the shaving line because then, because then it will be too short. Just tip the tips. All right. I start at the same like the back legs. I start with the front. If I do sit next to her, I don't want to see the hair is coming over her foot. So I definitely know if I hold my scissor on her toe that I want it as short as that. So I just make the start over here. And now I go from the top, hold my scissors straight, just scissor, even if I don't cut anything, I walk to the side and then I will turn my scissor and go down. That's the way I make the palms round and I never ever round it off like this. Because then I create, when she's walking or standing on the ground, that she have to, that have to create that it's smaller and at the top than the bottom. Now I will do the, the side, just to make a start of, of how far I will go. I, most of the time I will pick up the foot. I just switch the foot a little bit like this so we can make this a little bit nicer and then I walk from this part a little bit round to the side. You can just make the bottom already a little bit round so you have a place to go to for the scissor. Now we have to create the same way what we did on the front to the side. I'll hold my scissors straight. This is a very okay, the scissor. Straight, walk to the side, turn, and then go down to the part where you already rounded off here. If I look at the front, of if I'm standing at the front of her. I don't want to go that this line too much is next to her body. This will have to be a little bit more, shorten it up a little bit more. So maybe this is easier and then go down. So the back of uh, the pumps is just almost the same when you have to have scissoring uh, a second puppy clip or a tea clip or mother clip you always do that as the last part of the pump because this part you need the most hair to close up a little bit more space here between but it is the last part that um, grow is not a good word but it, it will damage a lot quicker because of playing. Be a little bit careful with scissoring the back. If you only need to tip it just to make it a little bit more proper, just do that. But don't scissor it to scissor it. If you don't need to scissor it, you don't need to scissor it. I do the same here at the back. Right above her foot. I just go a little bit upwards here, so to create her to stand on her toes, actually. So that you see that power nurse, and that you see the whole foot, if you look at her from a distance. And if you look at me uh, closely, how I do on the palms, you almost doesn't see me touch the, the top of the pump. If I do that, I will just hold my scissors straight, I will walk to the side and I, then I turn. I don't scissor it and try to make it round to hold my scissor like that. 
if you can't see the inside here, just hold the foot up and just scissor it this way. It is really not a problem. So if you do this, make sure you put the foot like that and not like this, because if you scissor it this way, you will make it really too short. If you make it a little bit more round here, always turn the foot a little bit downwards. So now she has, uh, we have the rough cut of her. Now all the lines are in. Um, next thing what we're gonna do is uh, first we do the spray up and when we have done the spray up we will scissor her uh, again to finishing her but we leave the lines exactly the way they are now we only make it more uh, proper and cleaner before we finishing her and, and make her clean and proper I first do the spray up because as I told before I always uh, learn my dogs to lay down and uh, lay on the pillow so I can do it all by myself and I don't need anyone to hold her head uh, but you can imagine if I had um, finished and cleaned the whole jacket and uh, especially the palms because she's uh, lying on top of them um, when she's standing up you can do it all your work again because you have to calm her a little again so it's better to do that afterwards. Now the top is uh, messy and if I spray it up now it will definitely uh, not look the way I want it. So first I have to do is I have to brush it again just gently because I don't use any conditioning spray now because I want the hair um, feel a little bit more uh, tougher and harder and so that it will be easier to getting straight up when I will spray her up. Normally before I go into the ring, that's why you see the um, straightener next to me, I do use a little bit of straightener to make sure that uh, the end of this coat is also straight and proper so I can get everything out of the top line as, as is possible. I also told you that I, when I'm bending her with wraps or elastic bands, I'm bending her until the end because you can imagine I want the top line to go straight up and not in a slight line to the top. So this hair must be as long as possible. If you compare it with the length of a hair on the top, you can imagine that this hair must be way longer than this hair to go straight up and then go to the top. And normally if I am in a, a grooming competition, and definitely when you are at the showground, Make sure you put a color and leash on before you spray up your top line because when it's in the hairspray and you have done it very nice, make done a very nice top line, you can imagine that you have to do it all over again when you have to put the leash in afterwards. I will start at the second one and just leave this here. So normally I will just pick up some pieces, just split it. And I will just nice gently going on top. And that's all I do. And then I will lay it down. And then I will get the next piece. I'm not really going 
and down to the bottom <coughs> and just calm it and make it straight and then I will put the straightener on just gently going up so the tips will be straight as well and of course the smaller pieces you get the nicer you get it but if you can see the difference now between uh, this hair and the hair I didn't do yet this hair looks like way more nicer in my opinion and I can work with it better so this will take a little bit of time normally so I, normally I do it in front as I go into the ring the grease I have the, the straightener on now is uh, 185 degrees. I think that is uh, enough. don't have to be any warmer. It must be a little bit warm but because you have to straighten up the hair and so and if it's too cold it will not work the way I want it. So now I comb everything backwards again and then we can just start doing the spray up. So as you can see it's a way a little frizzier than it was before, just using a little bit of the straightener. So now I can work with it more properly. Now we're gonna do the spray up. I am already start with putting the hair in the right direction. I just do a little bit spray here to have more strangeness in the ha hair. I'm not paying attention too much at, uh, at the front piece because this is the last one I will um, do at the end. Now I'm going to do the spray up. You have to know that <coughs> the smaller pieces you take, uh, the more strength your top line is getting. It's important to spray uh, at the beginning of your line. So I separate here the hair. If you do it here in front, just hold your hand in front of her eyes. And just spray it at the bottom. Right. And then I always hold the hair here a little bit with my hand. And then we go little bit by little. Don't push the hair too much down on your first layer. The more you push it down, uh, the flatter and the less volume your top line is gonna look. And I always work from the front to the back and the back to the front again and then if I have done that I always check if that is enough or that maybe I have to do it again from the side <coughs> if you do the sprayer for a grooming competition uh, of course it has to stand and it has to stand correctly 
but your dog don't have to move, it has to stand still. Of course, if you do it for a, a dog grooming show, your dog has to move, so it has to be very, very, very strong. Maybe you have to have uh, smaller layers with less hair, and maybe you have to do it once again to build up more strength underneath, just like they build a house. They, they start building with the poles in the ground, and that's the foundation of the house. This is the same with the top line. You build up a foundation of the hair, because you already see that the hair is going to stand up here, and I do not even touch the tips of the hair with the hairspray. If I do that, then I only make the uh, coat heavier. If I make the coat heavier on top, it definitely will fall down. So if you have done the front piece, now it's definitely important that this hair not falling to the side because I want it to have it straight up from the side of her jacket. So I want to push all the hair forward and as you can see the hair is, uh, will fall down here. So I have to make sure that it's going all the way up to this point. So I will have this point in my mind. And if I comb the layer to that point, I will comb it to that direction. If I already start doing that now, the, the less I have to uh, put my time in during a competition. If I have done it from the front to the back, from the back to the front, again from the side to the middle. It takes time. So try to do it at one time if you can. When you separate the hair again, you make sure you can spray at the bottom again, so there won't be hairs. And now I'm going to help myself to just hold that hair here with a little bit willing falling downwards. This comb from Utesumi is really working well uh, with spraying up the top line because there is some little angulation here in the comb so I can pick up the hair very easy and very gently and I can con have control of it actually in one time. If you have a dog with a very, very thick coat and you have to have, you can imagine the more time you need to do the spray up during a competition, the less you have uh, time to do the finishing on your dog. So if you are uh, a smart groomer, just make sure that you first build up spray already in the coat. The only thing is you have to be careful if you have to go outside with your dog for a pee or something uh, that the color of course doesn't mess up too much the hair. If I just do one layer like this and I will leave it, uh, the coat of course it will fall down. So it's not that uh, you have come into the competition ring with an all complete spray of of course not, but you can sometimes you have to be a little bit smart to create some time for yourself. I not always do that. I sometimes when I have the competition I know that it's not important that she I have to have the top line when she's moving because they will do the active judgment 
uh, when she's standing on the table and I will make sure she will not shake her head as long as I hold her. So uh, I do it, try to do it uh, a little bit faster and maybe get some bigger pieces or So if I go backwards, I don't go that low as that I was before, because there is already a line in. So now I go straight up, also a line, but just a little above that line. You can see that is, if you want to do it very proper, the best way to do it is if you would go back from this, from front to the back again, because your hair is going that way where you want it to have it. Of course, when you have to stand up, because now if you can see correctly, you can see that I push the hair backwards again. So now the only part I have to do a little bit again is the front part, but this one is standing up. Now I just pull back her pillow, just keep her laying down and then I will check it from the side because if she stands it also has to be straight up. So if I, I just lay her down for this so I can a little bit easier handling it because she is lower than me, then I of course just can do it when she's laying down. So now I'm gonna full up her top line with hairspray, first a little to the side, in her neck here I will spray a little spray and then I only push back the hair with my hands or I pull it a little bit out if I think it's too much, just use your hands to work with it. I most of the time use uh, the hair when it's too long to fill it up because her hair is a little bit thinner. I can't help it. She has had her puppies. They are biting in her top line. So I do use this kind of tips to look like it's a little bit more just standing next to her and I just Tip this part a little bit more off. I only tip this when I uh, have sprayed her up. Never do it without using hairspray to spray her up. 
I think I can work with it. Maybe I will put some more hairspray in. Just like that. Let's fill it up. So, of course, we have already done the scissoring. I have to use another comb now, because if I use this comb to groom her again, you can imagine there is some hairspray on the comb, you can get uh, the coat properly again. And the, fast, the, the better you put your lines in before the spraying up, the faster you can of course do the finishing. I just fluff this up again because she is laying down on it. And now you can see I have to scissor this part into her top line. I like it when you see the angulation here of her upper arm. You can pull this up with coat, but in my opinion you can see really uh, good that angulation then it's a little pity. So if you can see now here, this line will be straight all the time, but this is not really a nice angulation. You see it here smooth and then there is a bump on it here and I want to get rid of the bump, but I don't want the scissor hit too much here. So I always use uh, my curved scissor to curve this a little bit out, make it a little bit whole. Don't go too much to the top because I want to have that it's going to straight up. So if we have done this part, you can scissor this as short as you want, but don't make your shaving line different. The shaving line must be all the time straight. And why is that? Because if your dog is moving, if your shaving line is not going straight but it's going forward here, you make here a little bold build in the ribcage. If your dog is moving and he's stretching his legs, of course his whole body is going to stretch in all different ways then this part will make your dog even longer than it's necessary. So always keep this part st straight. You can round this off, so the line will be nice and smooth. Of course to the center at the side, because here we want to go st straight up, sorry. Because we have scissoring, here after the shaving part, it will look still look like a little messy. Um, it doesn't matter if we can keep cutting here, it will not change it. That's why I use the clipper again. I will put it gently and just tip it again to that part. The same way I do with the clipper again to make this line nice and clean. I also do when I have finished the ball. I do a little bit moist it again. I will scissor it. Normally I always use some scissoring spray. Uh, for the finishing, because if you use some scissoring spray, of course the, the coat gets a little more um, curled in a little, so you finishing will be much better looking if you do that. So let's say if he's ready, then I always will put with the back of my plate just around the lines again to make the line even get more 
proper cleaner. So now we don't have to forget, of course, to also do the tail. I calmed everything down. I feel where the end of her tail is. I hold my finger to that. And everything what is behind that, I will cut as short as possible. I can't scissor in her tail because my finger is on it. So then I will first scissor, of course, my fingers. Then I will hold the tail up. I comb everything down. Just like that. And I go around. And I also just start to do a little bit the same what I did with the pumps. But I don't shave it longer here because I want that the, the tail is part of the poodle. And I want to close this longer space between a little, you can imagine if you shave up here, that is a, a whole hole over there. And you can use the hair of the tail to close it up a little. And if I have done that, I will comb everything forward. If you are scissoring the tail, uh, try to look at your poodle when he's walk and try to scissor the tail how the dog held his tail when he's walking. She always uh, walk like this or she's never cut over to that only if you hold the tail but if she walks she's just going up and a little bit a little bit curled so that's the way I'm going to scissor it. I just pull her a little bit more to the front up with my hand and then I will calm it everything forward <coughs> And then I will cut this a little bit more off. So the tail looks nicer and shorter if I look at it. And then I will just scissor in the side. Just the way it's up. I can also hold it here, it's no problem. These curl her tail a little if I don't hold it, so I will keep here a little hair. So and if you can, if you want to leave all that hair here for a little volume in the tail, you of course can use some hairspray in the tail as well. I never do it. I just scissor it. Just scissoring the tips and then the tips will be a little like more. Sometimes you have to make it shorter instead of keeping too much hair that will make the coat um, that will make the coat thinner and if you make it shorter and you scissor it, it will look like she has more volume. If your dog is too heavy, it will look like a bulldozer in my opinion. And your poodle should be looking more elegant. One thing we need to do is the ears. And just lose this. I like it when the ears are not too long. She has too small ears, too short ears, I have to say. Um, it's just because um, a couple of months the puppies were biting on her ears and then she had a half ear long and a half ear short. So I let it grow a little and, and then I have to cut it a little bit more upwards. It's better that they are short then um, and looking nice as that they are long half and long short. 
if your dog has good long hair on the ears, I prefer it even not go any longer than uh, halfway. Because if, if I make pictures of my dog, I always bend in the ears. When I look at her now with her, it doesn't bother me that much because the ears are short. But if it's so full and so long, it's all, it's look like a blanket over the whole body and I want to see the, the body of the dog. So that's why I always take pictures of my dog with bands in the ear. So if this is to each other, you can see the angulation and the neck. That's, <laughs> that's the way I like it. But we can't show our dog <laughs> in bands. And if you think it's necessary just to clean it up a little, you can Cut a little bit of the ear. Most of the time you have to do it because you have the bands in. And then you see a little line in the ears, but I only do scissor them if they are not broken or bitten off by puppies on a competition or a show. So if you go to a show a lot, only tip it. Well, okay, this was my demonstration for a continental clip for Romania. I hope you have learned something new of, the, of that you like it. I will wish you all good luck with the nominations tonight. And uh, I hope you have fun grooming your dog at home for the competition in Romania. Of course, we would like to stand in the ring next time again with each other. For now, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you soon.